First up, concrete convertible. Bethesda, Maryland. It's said that this is the best educated city in the U.S. But the man in this story believes life's most valuable lessons aren't found in an expensive college. Meet Brandon Skinner. He drives a concrete mixer truck for a living. Brandon has a rock-solid reputation on the construction worksite, but when it comes to women, Brandon gets himself mixed up. Meet Brandon's ex-wife, Maggie Skinner. Well, he was, he was a really good guy, but he, he had a lot of issues with trust. All his other girlfriends had cheated on him, and his mom had up and left him when he was really young. He was an impressionable age, so yeah, he, he was hurting inside. Brandon believed his new bride, Maggie, was a woman who was going to stick around. Oh, Maggie. She's just the best thing ever happened to me. I mean, she's the best woman I ever met. If I was walking down the street and guys were checking me out, he didn't like it. He would just get really angry and upset. He just couldn't stop himself from, you know, checking up on me and uh, following me and, you know, just making sure, you know, sometimes he'd listen in on my phone calls just in case, and it was always just my girlfriends. Brandon's issues of trust just won't go away, and his insecurities are cemented in his psyche. Jealousy can be self-destructive. Meet relationship expert, Gladina McMahon. When you're jealous, you can see a threat in everything. Jealousy is about threat, because your own insecurity will tell you that if I'm not good enough, someone else can just walk in and take the object that I love, in this case, Maggie. September 10th, 2000. Brandon is home early from work. He overhears Maggie on the phone, and his suspicious streak gets the better of him. My husband will be at work all day. No, he doesn't suspect a thing. <laughs> she was saying stuff like, uh, why don't you come over around one, and then she started gigging like a schoolgirl and said she couldn't wait, and, oh, man. Oh. I mean, you don't have to tell me what the hell that sounded like. Brandon tries to convince himself that his wife isn't a cheat, but deep down, he fears the worst. Maggie never cheat on me. I mean, she wouldn't. She's not that kind of woman, you know. At the end, one o'clock comes around, and I get in my rig, and I drive home. Brandon's fears are confirmed. There's a strange car in his driveway. And not just any car, a convertible, my dream car. The dream car is the center of his nightmare. And I see Maggie in the window, and she gives this guy this, this hug. I just saw red, and I just died, just snapped. And uh, I backed my rig up, dropped the chute, but I just <laughs> feel that whole car full of cement. <laughs> and I felt great. Brandon feels great until he learns who owned the convertible. It was Brandon's new car, an anniversary present from Maggie. Maggie had been saving to buy him his dream car, which the salesman was just dropping off. It's now filled with 250 square yards of concrete. Yeah, that, was, that was it for me. You know, I loved Brandon, I did. But who knows what the next crazy thing is going to do is I can't live like that. I can't. Do you know there's not a day that goes by that I don't wake up and I just, I just wish he'd come back because I, well, I love you, Maggie, and just love you. A sad ending to Brandon's story, but is it true? Did his jealous rage sink his marriage? If you couldn't believe someone could actually pour concrete into a shiny new convertible, then you'd be right. This story is urban legend. It's been around since the 60s, 
The model of the dream car changes with the era, but the overprotective, jealous, revenge-seeking spouse is a common character. In some versions, it's the wife who has the concrete poured into the cheating husband's car, but more often than not, it's the other way around. <laughs>